please continue to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance led by our senior class officers. Would you please continue standing as our Jonathan Law Choir performs our national anthem. Please be seated. In every life, a little rain must fall. May the little part be truer now than ever. Mayor Benjamin Blake, members of the Board of Education, members of the Board of Aldermen and the Board of Finance, Dr. Fieser, Mr. Cummings, Mrs. Kapazna, Mrs. Kelleher, Mr. Richitelli, Central Office Administrators, Mr. Cavana, Mrs. Drew, honored guests, faculty and staff, family members and friends, and most importantly, the class of 2015. We welcome you this evening to the graduation ceremony at Jonathan Law High School. It is my pleasure to introduce to you at this time, Dr. Elizabeth Fieser, Superintendent of Schools for the City of Milford, who will present this year's salutatorian and valedictorian. Dr. Fieser. that I stand before all of you and offer my deepest congratulations to the young men and women receiving their diplomas this evening. As all of you know, you just have to look at me and you know that I've been a professional educator for many, many years. And as you can well imagine, I've been in the position to reflect on the characteristics of many, many graduating classes that I've come to know throughout my career. And I've given many, many graduation speeches. As I began to reflect on the achievements of this class, however, the 
the only word I can come up with is remarkable. Your achievements are many and impressive. I'm just going to cite two, but the list is endless. To begin with, the Jonathan Law class of 2015 performed 15,150 hours of community service. About the members of this class. Whether it was assisting senior citizens with yard work, tutoring struggling readers after school, mentoring middle school youth in various programs and activities, or ringing the bell for the Salvation Army Kettle, you were there and we are so grateful. Many of you also were among the designated 141 advanced placement scholars, which resulted in Milford ranking 12th in the state out of 116 towns offered eight courses. <laughs> in the 24 school districts in our reference group. For me, however, what is most remarkable about the class of 2015 is who you are as individuals and as a class. I begin my remarks stating that I'm humbled and grateful to be before you this evening. I'm humbled by your individual and collective strength and courage, and I'm grateful for what you have taught all of us and continue to reinforce in us, and that is the immeasurable power of the human spirit. I, we, are all blessed as a community today to honor and to celebrate you. And I want to personally thank you, thank you for what you've taught me, what you've taught all of us. And I want to thank the entire law staff for what you have given to us, to us here and to everyone here. It is remarkable what you have done. To the members of this class, I have no words of wisdom to offer as you go forward this evening because you have already shown us and the community at large that you are wiser than most. But borrowing from a talk, I recently heard at a church service at a local college. While I won't attempt to offer insights into life, I'd like to ask to you to make commitments upon departing from law high school this evening. I ask you first to be kind, considerate, and giving of yourself. As Esau once said, no act of kindness, no matter how small, is ever wasted. I ask that you improve the dignity of others, the disenfranchised, the poor, the shunned. We need a world that is just. I ask you to be sources of hope to others. You know that life is not always fair. You know that life disappoints. You know that sometimes life causes despair. But hope renews, hope inspires, hope counters fear, hope gives life. And finally, I ask you to commit to repair and restore this world. One only has to hear the daily news across the state, across this country, and across the globe to know that we need a more humane world. The world needs you, every one of you, to do whatever you can to make this world a better place. So I ask you to please commit as you leave the city. Again, my heartfelt congratulations to each and every one of you. God bless you all and keep you safe.
Super Aqua program, Jamie has had hands-on experience with blood typing, running immuno assays, and growing bacteria. Jamie was inducted into the National Honor Society during her junior year, is the recipient of the Harvard Book Award, the Merit Award for Academic Excellence in Medical Veterinary Clinical Lab Science, and the University of Connecticut at Avery Point Book Award for Outstanding Achievement in Marine Environmental Education. She is an AP scholar, has earned excellence awards in English too, music, science, and marching band. Jamie was a semi-finalist for the Governor's Scholarship, a recipient of the President's Gold Award for Education Excellence, and the Jonathan Law High School Academic Achievement Award. Jamie is graduating with distinction, having volunteered more than 200 hours during her high school tenure. As an active member of her community, Jamie is the president of the National Helpers and has played a large part in restructuring the roles and responsibilities of its members to increase leadership and enrollment. She is a member of the school band and the Milford United Percussion Group. Through her church, she has attended mission trips and participated in charity functions and fundraisers. In 10th grade, she attended a week-long leadership forum in Boston, which focused on careers in medicine. Jamie has volunteered in the cardiothoracic intensive care unit at Yale New Haven Hospital. Last summer, she had the opportunity to work as a medical assistant at the Milford Vascular Institute under the supervision of Dr. David Esposito. Dr. Esposito has said Jamie has the ability and more importantly, the desire to be the best at everything she does. This year, Jamie took part in our district senior internship experience program. Through her internship under the tutelage of Dr. Esposito, Jamie has checked vital signs, assisted in office procedures, and observed surgeries. Jamie will attend the University of Connecticut in the fall, majoring in molecular and cell biology. She is the recipient of the University of Connecticut's Presidential Scholarship, which will cover her tuition over the next four years. She also has been admitted to the highly selective eight-year medical program at UConn. This program offers gifted and talented high school students focused on medicine the opportunity to combine a broad liberal arts-based program with medical education. It links four years of a unique undergrad experience with four years of medical education to develop accomplished physicians, resulting in, a dual, in dual degrees. She will receive a bachelor's degree and an MD degree. Those who work closely with Jamie describe her as humble, articulate, and passionate. She is overflowing with possibility and potential and is thought to be beyond her years. Jamie's laid-back nature and sense of humor will benefit her as she continues on the challenging path to medical school. We congratulate Jamie. Welcoming and thanking the Honorable Dr. Fieser, Mr. Cummings, Mayor Blake, Central Office staff, members of the Board of Education, Mr. Thompson, distinguished administrators, faculty and guests, family and friends, for being here with us on this momentous day. Without your caring devotion, we would not be here celebrating today, and for that we sincerely thank you. In the true spirit of an academic overachiever, I started to write and plan this address at 11.30 the night before Ms. Rally asked for it. Though it may seem like it, this was no act of being occupied with other tasks. I was simply overwhelmed. At 18, what immense knowledge do I have to give to my class, the people who have surrounded me since kindergarten? What wisdom have I gained by getting good grades? The answer is none. What I have gained, however, is a lot of experience with education. Therefore, I decided to use this opportunity to reflect on our education in 200 of my friends. After all, isn't high school about education? Of course it is. Only, education isn't necessarily about the facts. Rather, education gives us the opportunity to learn the whys of life. Any textbook can explain the where and when of World War II, the derivative of X squared, or what makes a good essay. It takes our teachers and our classmates to understand the why and the how. 
why it matters how the persecuted felt, how math can be used to understand and change our world, and why communication through writing matters when you're writing about something you believe in. The facts are important, but sometimes the most important thing a student can do is ask why. Recently, we were confronted with a why not even our teachers, parents, pastors, reverends, or principals could answer. I think it's fair to say that our class experienced things in high school that normal kids don't have to combat. The overpowering feelings of numbness, shock, loss, and despair. Why did this happen, we ask. Why here, why us, why now? Though we may never know why, simply by asking, we learned three important and unforgettable lessons. From this event and from you, from us, the class of 2015, I learned three things. First, I learned about our resilience. There are evils in the world, but they're no match for the class of 2015. We were struck down, but we bounced back harder than ever. We were told of death and felt despair, so we cultivated a garden that grows and lives every day to inspire love. We were told we couldn't have merit, so we had peace, love, music, and community instead. With the help of our school, our families, the Milford community, as well as each other, we have learned that the evil in this world is no match for our strong hearts. The second lesson I came to understand is the importance of caring. Though we are classmates, pretending that our group project on Eleanor Roosevelt, our AP Euro study group, was the most important part of high school would be a lie. More than that, I've learned that we care for each other. Maybe not in the obvious ways, but in a more subtle and a more true way. A simple look when someone knows you're about to cry, a tissue passed silently and without judgment down the row of a classroom. A text to make sure everything's all right from a classmate you didn't even know. Again, school's not just about the facts. As Theodore Roosevelt put it, no one cares how much you know until they know how much you care. The third and perhaps the most important lesson I learned is about courage. Not in the sense of running onto a battlefield and screaming for Narnia or anything of the sort, but a kind that's much stronger and much more difficult. The courage to confront each other and to confront ourselves. The courage to reach out to another member of our class, whether you're friends or not, and tell them that it's okay to not be okay. The courage to know when it's time to cry and the courage to cry. Because admitting how we feel is not in any way easy. The courage to accept that good and bad things happen at the same time. The courage to mourn the loss of life but to continue to live it too. The courage to know, truly know, that as Robert Frost said, the only way around is through. Thank you, friends, for teaching me this again and again. Though classes in high school have given us the knowledge to continue our education and begin our careers, we ourselves, the class of 2015, with the help of our friends, our families, and our school system, have learned these three things. In a year, no one except for maybe my mom will remember all of the words I just imparted. As Maya Angelou so gracefully put it, I've learned that people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. Friends, as we leave this graduation ceremony today, look forward. Look to the fun you will have this summer, your upcoming days in college or in your career. Look and work towards the vision you have of yourself in 10 years. But please, never forget the lessons we've learned from each other. Remember your resilience. Remember the value of caring. Remember your courage. And never, never forget to ask why. Thank you, class of 2015, for being my teachers and my friends. Congratulations. Rochester Bausch & Long Honorary Science Award. 
Ming was inducted into the National Honor Society her junior year and has earned excellence awards in the area of Algebra II, Biology, Health, Geometry, Chemistry, Physics, and AP Biology. She is the recipient of the CAP Superintendent's Award, the President's Gold Medal Award for Educational Excellence, and the 2015 U.S. National Chemistry Olympiad Award. Ming is a commended student of the 2015 National Merit Program and a student ambassador. She is graduating with distinction, having volunteered more than 200 hours during her high school tenure. Ming demonstrates outstanding leadership through her active roles as Vice President of the National Honor Society, as Secretary of her class since sophomore year, and as a dedicated member of the cheerleading squad. In fact, her year-round commitment to cheerleading has earned Ming many awards, including Most Valuable Player, Best Flyer, and Best Dancer. It has also earned her a position on her university's cheerleading squad. In addition to cheerleading, Ming has been playing the piano competitively since the age of six. She has competed in regional tournaments and medaled through the Royal Conservatory of Music. Having an affinity for science and math, Ming spent the past two summers at Yale Medical School under the supervision of Dr. Zhang Yun in the Department of Therapeutic Radiology. Dr. Yun said Ming has an uncanny ability to comprehend complex scientific concepts far beyond her years and that the quality of her work is consistently excellent. Ming is a co-author of a poster which was presented at the 2014 annual meeting of the Association of American Cancer Research. Ming will attend the University of Connecticut in the fall, majoring in molecular and cell biology. She is the recipient of UConn's competitive Nutmeg Scholarship, which will cover the cost of tuition, room, and board over the next four years. Ming has also been accepted to the eight-year medical program at UConn. As I previously mentioned, this highly selective program offers gifted and talented students the opportunity to define their bachelor's and MD programs. In fact, this program is so selective that of approximately 500 applications submitted to UConn, 17 students have been accepted and will enroll in the fall. Jonathan Law is the only school to have two students accepted. special seminars and a health profession and health profession events. She will be mentored through her undergrad experience which will strengthen her preparation for medical school. Those who work closely with Ming describe her as a dynamo. Her natural ability and work ethic are beyond admirable. Ming is ambitious and assertive and one of her best qualities in the classroom and the lab is her ability to get it right the first time every time. Congratulations, Ming. Right now, I'm definitely not more prepared for next year than any of you. 
I don't have any sage wisdom that I can impart to you, but what I can do is elaborate on what I'm thinking right now. Right now, as I am standing up here nervously saying this speech, wearing a dress that's so tight I can barely breathe, <laughs> and heels that I'm afraid I'll trip in, and a gown that's making me sweat a lot, I realize that this moment that I've been dreaming of for so long isn't as magical as I imagined. I realize that the whole time I spent walking through the walls of law, thinking about graduation how, and how I won't have to be here soon, I should have spent enjoying it. Looking back now, there's actually so many things that I will, and I bet all of you will miss about law. We will miss the teachers who've touched their hearts and inspired us to decide who we want to be, the underclassmen we befriended, the sports we were involved in, the clubs we participated in, and most of all, each other, as we go on to do whatever we're doing next year, whether it's college, working, the military, or anything else. We've had so many special moments together, such as all the school dances, having to experience a schedule change every year we've been here, getting a private concert from a great big world, spending a whole day at Lake Quasi together last year, and attending the first ever annual Peace, Love, and Music from Marin Bay. Sure, we should all be excited to receive our diplomas and smile pretty for the camera, but we will actually miss the things about high school that we once complained about. I know some people can't wait to start the next chapter of their lives, but I just want to say one thing. Don't rush through some of the greatest moments life has to offer just because you can't wait for the next big thing in your future. Take the time to enjoy what is happening. Ralph Waldo Emerson said that life is a journey, not a destination. And I guess what I'm trying to say is, don't rush through that journey. Yes, this will sound cliche, but it is important to live in the moment before you won't have it anymore. Don't anticipate what is to come. Don't worry about what is to come. And don't anticipate the ending of things, such as high school. The key to a truly successful and happy life isn't about how many accomplishments you've made, how much money you make, or how famous you become but it is about making the most of every event or opportunity life offers you. So before we graduate and go on to discover what the future holds for us, remember to not focus too much on what you want your life to be, but just enjoy the ride along the way. Because like Ferris Bueller said, life moves pretty fast. If you don't stop and look around once in a while, you can miss it. Thank you and congratulations. <laughs> Thank you, Ming. Graduation is not the destination. It's a milestone, a marker of where you've been. It's the threshold to your future. Four years ago, you entered this campus thinking tonight was your destination. The journey to that destination would take you through the halls, classrooms, and fields at Jonathan Law. Hard work would get you to tonight, and your diploma would be the tangible acknowledgement of your destination. The dilemma in that, however, is life is constantly changing the destination. As a result, it is in the journey, not the destination, that we find our purpose. We entered Jonathan Law High School together, unsure of what the future held for us. Our journey was filled with triumphs and tribulations, laughter and tears, great successes and great losses. Through it all, the journey taught us about love and loss, compassion and resilience, hope and faith. Tonight, your journey makes a brief stop on this partly cloudy, sort of dry field. <laughs> a brief stop to look back at where you've been, to reflect on how this leg of the journey has helped shape you, the shining moments of success, and the great challenges you faced. Tonight bridges the gap between gaining knowledge and applying it, and your journey continues. The journey toward putting that knowledge into practice is the most important journey you will take. My friends, it's a lifelong journey. 
Pope Francis, or as my mother refers to him, the other holy man named Francis in the world. It's my mom, what can I say? He talked about the journey. He noted one in saying that journeying is an art because if we are always in a hurry, we get tired and don't arrive at our journey's goal. He also said if we stop, we don't go forward and we also miss the goal. Journeying is precisely the art of looking towards the horizon, thinking of where I want to go, but also enduring the fatigue of the journey, which is sometimes difficult. There are dark days, even days when we fail, even days when we fall. But Pope Francis said, always think of this, don't be afraid of failures. Don't be afraid of falling. What matters in the art of journeying isn't falling, but not staying down. Get up right away and continue going forward. Furthermore, he noted that it's bad walking alone. It's bad and boring. Walking in community with friends, with those who love us, that helps us. It helps us to arrive precisely at that goal that we're supposed to arrive at. More so than any young group before you, the concept of getting through difficult journeys together and getting up and being stronger is a scenario we have lived too many times. At the services for Laura Gonzalez yesterday, the pastor said something that really struck me. He said, through crisis, we must find the purpose. I'm not sure how that happens. I know after Maren's loss last year, I was unable to find any light, any purpose. My journeying came upon a very dark time and getting up from that fall seemed almost impossible. But emerging from my grief, my anger, my inability to reconcile the events that occurred in our school to a girl so beloved, through an amazing spirit of kindness and compassion, as if Mary herself was showing us the purpose of the journey. We became more aware of our surroundings, more aware of those around us, more aware of our own humanity. Our peace, love, and music from Marin Day truly was a gift from Marin. It was about celebrating an amazing life well lived, about celebrating her journey, albeit much too short, and about remembering how each of us became better for knowing Marin or knowing about how she lived her life. Life gives us two choices. Accept the conditions as they exist or accept the responsibility to change them. You've already demonstrated through your interactions with each other and with our community that you have accepted the responsibility to make things better. I believe that is the purpose of Jonathan Law High School. Yes, we do set the academic bar high and you've reached that threshold. Yale, Cornell, BC, NYU, UCLA, just to name a few places. 92% of our graduates are going on to further their learning, and 2% will be honoring us with their service in the military. The combined independent scholarship packages given to this class by various colleges and universities totals $1,343,332. I love that number. But what makes Jonathan Law the special place that it is has not only to do with excelling academically, but also understanding that the journey's goal is about much more than financial success and social status. The journeying is to find the purpose in where, what we are meant to do to help others, to show that kind gesture to someone in need, to be there for others simply because it's the right thing to do. As Dr. Fieser alluded to, this amazing collection of young men and women here tonight have logged over 15,150 hours of community service, and that's just the number we know of. I'd like to acknowledge all of the wonderful parents and family members for your tireless dedication, your love, your support, and most of all, for the attention you've paid to your children. My friends, I have no doubt that you are the right ones to ensure our future is headed in the right direction. The world is starving for new leadership, new ideas, for a better way of doing things. 
Margaret Mead said that we should never believe that a few caring people can't change the world. For indeed, that's all who ever have. My friends, celebrate your achievements and get excited about your journey. Remember that when you fall, it's about getting up and being stronger for it. And please, please remember that Jonathan Law is here to share in your successes and offer a hand when you fall. For it's all part of the journey. And we can't wait to watch you soar. I love you guys. Thank you. At this time, I would like to offer my sincere thanks to all those who have worked to ensure this ceremony is a success. Paul Cavana and Pat Drew, Gianni Regini, Barbara Kovacs, Jennifer Dunnick, Mike Vitali and the golf cart crew, all of the faculty and staff that you see seated here on the field, John Smith, Walter Kubek and the entire custodial and maintenance staff, Kathy Etruria, Meg Stafko, those that helped with set up this morning, Robin Ramos, Kathy Kizzival, Liz Carr, Melanie Paolini, Renee Borer, and Mark Robinson for the sound. And last but certainly not least, Teddy Boynton in the Key Club. Finally, I'd like to publicly acknowledge the commitment and dedication to the class of 2015 shown by our senior class advisor, Mrs. Barbara Kovacs. Thank you, Mrs. Kovac. Graduates, would you please stand? <laughs> Mayor Blake, distinguished members of the Board of Education, Dr. Fieser, Mr. Cummings, and those here tonight, these members of the graduating class have completed all statutory and school board requirements for a diploma from Jonathan Law High School and the Milford Public Schools. Please hold your applause until all names have been read. I will now present the graduates. Sophia Emily Calvin. <laughs> Matilda Delphin Hill. <laughs> Ni Ye Hu. Benjamin Clinton Longabardi. Kelsey Nicole Capazma. Nina Isabel Martinez. Jamie Catherine Georgellis. Evelyn Edith Castro. Jeremy Michael Doucet. Mary Zyrene P. Adeo. Raven Simone Grant. <laughs> Haley Nicole Palmer. <laughs> Alessandra Marie Allen. <laughs> Mohammed R. Al Habali. Adil Ali. Amar Almadiani, Shahed Almatiri, Chance Ryan Ardito, Haley Nicole Ashton, Brittany Lee Majerski. Justine Marie Bannon. <laughs> Rakesia Taquana Bass. 
Matthew Edmund Becker. Nicholas Edward Beecher. Aubrey Meredith Becco. Sean Gabriel Burr. Chelsea Bernard. Kevin Mark Bernier. Jordan James Beck. Megan Nicole Bavacqua. Alejandra Maria Biondino. Kylie Rose Booth. Jamie Marie Burwell. Jared Clifton Butts. Zanabria Yolan Cadet. Craig Sean Calderon. Anjali Kalawara. Dakota William Callahan. Drew John Carroll. Daniel Bernard Serena. Sean Barry Chesler. Michael Joseph Chabzuko. Daniel Webster Cox. Tiffany Elise Coleman. Olivia Marie Collins. Morgan Claire Colombo. Justin Cortez. John Costa. Tyler Ryan Curtin. Sarah Elizabeth Dato. Angelina Michelle Decola. Michael Robert Delorio. Annalise Rose DeLuca. Samantha Brooke DeMarco. Brady Michael Dennegan. Colin Martin DePisa. Timothy O'Reilly Edson. Morgan Grace Eldering. Capri Laura Ellison. Jeffrey Ang. Rachel Kelly Escobar. Ava Maria Favazzo. Emily A. Fetter. Colin Robert Finch. Ashley Elizabeth Finch. Catherine Elizabeth Frawley. Joshua Anthony Galarza. Samuel Keenan Garcia. Jason Howard Bella. Max Robert German. Sky Lynn Jill. Ernest David Gonzalez. Michael Brendan Gorman.
Emma Jane Grace. <laughs> Megan Marie Gritz. <laughs> Melissa Mara Hanania. Christopher James Hine. Morgan Lee Hennessy. Phoebe Elizabeth Herbert. Joshua Michael Hicks. James Jude Howe. <laughs> Samantha Rose Hudak. <laughs> Darby Rose Hud. <laughs> Ashley Danielle Irvine. <laughs> Shravia Jeladonki. Jake Thomas Jello. <laughs> Elizabeth Rice Jenkins. <laughs> Destiny Leanne Jennings. <laughs> Michelle Claudia Janellis. <laughs> Ismar Janozovic. <laughs> Razan Kaiser. <laughs> Sarah Kaiser. <laughs> Corey Lynn Califas. <laughs> Yokobus Kurza. Sang Chan and Come Home. Walter Joseph Kernan. Charles Michael Knight. Benjamin Matthew Kowalski. Joshua Ryan Kusowitz. Emily Reese LaLuna. Brandon Matthew Lanaga. Imani Dion Langston. Dana Ashley Lawford. <laughs> Nicholas Lawrence. Amanda Lynn Leon. Rebecca Lynn Lissio. Enrique Linus III. Brandon Matthew Lowe. Angelica James Loma. Hillary John J. Lucchetti. Alexis Marie Valtes. Brittany Sonia Manganello. Giovanni Michael Marzullo. Taylor Ann McNary. 
Haley Ann Merjewski. Victoria Rose Milliken. Aaron Daris Moncrees. Zachary Osbin Mullen. Michael Joseph Murray. Hannah Courtney Niver. Nicholas Michael Nuno. Patrick James O'Brien. Jewel Ifani Okosa. April Maria Ospina. Zachary Arthur Orphelian. Nicole Marie Palmer. Kyle Christopher Parks. Druvit Kaushik Patel. Nikita Ponkaj Patel. Kayla Shea Patrick. Kaylin Andrea Perez. Barbara Teresa Perezuna. Carol Ann Phillips. Michaela Catherine Pound. Alberto Aaron Principe. Herbert Joseph Pritchard. Marissa Angela Prizio. Meadow Radana. Timothy George Reventish. Nicola Jane Reynolds. Sean Patrick Rice. Angel Santos Rivera. Stephanie Marie Rodriguez. Zachary Patrick Rooney. Matthew R. Sakowitz. Rashida Sammy. <laughs> Haley Della Sanchez. <laughs> Marin Victoria Sanchez.
Anthony Santiago. Storm Elizabeth Sonian. Paige Marie Schwartz. Alyssa Marie Scott. David Frederick Sears. Jordan Rose Shackett. Nabil Shirazi. Leonard Shamsky. Jack William Shukaro. Stacy Lee Singer. Maxwell Lucas Slusky. Alyssa Marie Smerablino. Martha Lynn Smith. Cassandra Olivia Steele. Sarah Elizabeth Stilato. Austin Nathaniel Stewart. Yeah. Holly Noel Stewart. Woo. Zachary Straw. Yeah. Shannon Janet Sullivan. Kyle Gabriel Devera Tan. Mackenzie Peter Taylor. Zoe Elizabeth Taylor. Tyler Tabavonsa. Nicole Michelle Thibodeau. Kaylee Rose Tierney. Matthew Andrew Tool. Peter Brandon Turnus. Anthony Victor Tracy. Daryl Malik Tunstall Wilkes. Nelson Isaiah Vasco. Erica Elizabeth Velke. Dylan David Vino. Giovanni Michael Volturno. Ian James Watterson. Joshua Lewis Wiesel. Brittany Ann Welch. Miles Robert Wen. Brianna 
Monique Williams. Margaret Fowler Williams. Shannon Marie Williams. Olivia Alexandra Wright. Cassidy Idalis Xavier. Volkan Yildiz. Christina Zakopoulos. George Zakopoulos. before anything else, thriving on every A, and cringing at anything less. But because of that, I can really only call myself an expert in one part of life, and that's learning. So, with that being said, I would like to translate my thoughts to you using the one subject I know best, math. In mathematics, there is a concept entitled the butterfly effect. Mathematicians use it to predict weather patterns and decode cryptography, among other things. But it deals with the idea that no deed goes unacknowledged and that every action somehow affects the conditions for how the future will play out. The main contention of the butterfly effect is, that, is the idea that even the smallest actions instigate a series of other actions, each one much larger than the prior. To make this more understandable, picture a pebble on top of a mountain. Let's say that a migra migrating bird comes and lands on our mountain. The motion of the landing causes our tiny pebble to roll and gradually fall as a slope, down the slope as gravity dictates it. As it travels in its path, it hits other rocks, causing them to fall as well. Each of those rocks hits other rocks, and before you know it, there is an avalanche, all from the simple actions of a small bird. According to the butterfly effect, a mere butterfly flapping its wings in Beijing could cause hurricanes in San Francisco. This seems hard to believe, but it is both possible and mathematically proven. So what is the point, and why am I giving you a math lecture when this is supposed to be a graduation speech? When I first learned about the butterfly effect, I saw wisdom on a completely different level. 
It reminded me of a lesson that all of us have learned over the course of the past year. One that was taught ever so beautifully by our beloved classmate and friend, Marin Sanchez. As we all know, Marin lived life to the absolute fullest. She is the kind of person that I can honestly say we all strive to be. She epitomized Scott Adams' quote, there is no such thing as a small act of kindness. Every act creates a ripple with no logical end. With simple smiles and passionate concern for others, she impacted and touched more lives in her time with us than many could ever dream of doing themselves. It is an incredible honor and pleasure to have known Marin, and for that reason, I stand here before you and echo the message that she gifted us with. High school has been a journey to say the least. We have all learned our fair share of wisdoms, which we will undoubtedly bring with us into the future. But if you take nothing else away from the experience, through all the good memories and the bad, know that all the little things in life go a long way. Minuscule actions, such as lending a hand to a passerby, can seem trivial in the moment, but are meaningful in the long run. Understand the extent of your influence and know that whenever you are doing something kind, the butterfly effect is taking place. It is so easy to brighten a day, to make an impact, and to change a life. Journey down your paths as Marin would. Act with kindness and care for others and watch as the effect ripples. In the end, as the second epistle of the Corinthians tells us, we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Congratulations. <laughs> At this time, I would like Mrs. Kovacs to come up. on behalf of the class of 2015, we want you to know that we appreciate everything you've done for us and we will always remember you. Thank you. the right side to the left side as we move to the next stage of our lives. 